In this lesson, we'll be looking at pressure as one of the three factors that affect the position of chemical equilibrium. It's very important to remember that pressure only applies to gases. So you need to look out for the little G because that means it's a gas and that is when we can apply pressure. Now, when dealing with pressure, we look at the balanced chemical equation. It has to be balanced. And we look at the number of moles of gases, of reactants and products. So this number over here, this number over here, this number over here, this tells me the number of moles of gases, of reactants and products. So if I had to divide this equation, we can use the little arrows over here. These are my reactants on the left hand side, always will be. And these are my products over here on the right hand side. How many moles of reactants do I have? Well, I have one mole of nitrogen gas, so one plus three moles of hydrogen gas. I have four moles of gas on the left hand side. So I have four moles of gas that are reactants. On the right hand side, I only have two moles of gas as a product. So when a system has reached equilibrium, I can do one of two things to pressure. I can either increase the pressure or I can decrease the pressure. If I increase the pressure, then what happens is the reaction that is favored will be the reaction that will produce a fewer number of moles. So how I like to think of it is I'm making pressure bigger. So what does the system want to do? According to Le Chatelier's principle, when I disturb equilibrium in a closed system, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance. So remember what we said in previous videos, the system always will do the opposite of what we do to it. So if I increase pressure, it wants to do the opposite. The system will want to decrease pressure. And how does it decrease pressure? Well, it wants to favor the reaction that produces less moles. So if I make it more, it wants to go less. And if I decrease pressure, so I'm making pressure less, then the reaction that will be favored will be the reaction that will produce more moles. So it is always the opposite. If I decrease pressure, then the reaction that produces more moles is favored. If I increase pressure, the reaction that produces less moles is favored. So opposite, decrease more, increase less. I hope that makes sense. So let's do examples. If I increase pressure, what happens according to Le Chatelier's principle? So let's answer this as if we were to do it in an exam. So first of all, an increase in pressure disturbs equilibrium. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will reinstate, will create a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance. So it will favor the reaction that will produce fewer moles. Okay, produce fewer moles moles. Why fewer moles? Because I increase the pressure. So I increase the pressure. The system says, okay, I therefore want to produce fewer moles. I want to do the opposite of what you have done. Fewer moles of gas. Hey? Very important of gas. So remember we said earlier that the forward reaction, remember the forward reaction is the one that points this way. The forward reaction produces this. The forward reaction produces two moles of gas. And what about the reverse reaction? Well, the reverse reaction points in the opposite direction. This way is the reverse reaction. Look what it's pointing at. The reverse reaction produces these. The reverse reaction, therefore, produces four moles of gas. Okay, look at which way it's pointing. The reverse reaction, the one that's going this way, produces one plus three. There's an invisible one here. One plus three, four moles of gas. So because I increase pressure, the system will favor the reaction that produces less moles, fewer moles of gas. Therefore, the forward reaction will be favored because it produces two moles of gas, which is less than four moles. Equilibrium will shift in the direction of fewer gas moles. Therefore, the forward reaction will be favored. And what that ultimately means, if the forward reaction is favored, remember we mentioned this in a previous video, if I favor the forward reaction, so that's the reaction that goes this way. I will be increasing the concentration of my product and I will also be decreasing the concentration of the reactants. There we go. Let's see if you can answer the next question. Pressure is decreased, the opposite scenario. What will happen according to Le Chatelier's principle? So before I write out all the explanations, remember the forward reaction produces two moles 
of gas. It's always gas. So if one of these was anything else but gas, we would exclude it in my calculations and my answer. The forward reaction produces two moles of gas. The reverse reaction produces four moles of gas. So if I decrease pressure, I'm making pressure less. The system wants to do the opposite of that. And what the system wants to do is it wants to make up the shortage of pressure. It wants to end up increasing the pressure. So it favors the reaction that produces more gas, more moles of gas. So therefore the reverse reaction is favored. So a decrease in pressure disturbs equilibrium. Then I state what Le Chatelier's principle says. So as we said, we want to make up for the deficit in gas moles because we decrease pressure. So we want to make more gas to increase the pressure. So we favor the reverse reaction because that makes four moles of gas. So the reverse reaction is favored. That will end up increasing the concentration of my reactants and decreasing the concentration of my products. I hope that was helpful. If you missed any of the other videos going over the other factors and how to answer them using Le Chatelier's principle, check out the link in the description box below. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye everyone.